Hey everyone, it's Katie and welcome to The Spark, your new Thursday boost from the Creative Boom podcast. Just when you thought you couldn't get enough of us, this is your creative pick-me-up as we approach the end of the working week. First up, we had Luigi Carnivali on the podcast this week and my goodness, what a guy. I mean, I just love Luigi because he is so open and honest and kind and giving. I mean, anybody who knows him in the creative industry will tell you um, the same. He's a very popular chap and um, I just, I loved having a chat with him. He was so honest. I knew he'd be a great guest and share lots of things we just don't hear enough about in the creative industry. I mean, we were talking about the art of reinvention and some of the challenges we face as we get older, how we navigate new tech, new trends, new client demands, whether he's going to dance on TikTok. Um, When we know it's time to call it a day or change something, And just how we stay the course, you know, because it's tough, isn't it, when you run something on your own um, or run a team or a climb in the career ladder, whatever you do. And remember, you know, it's it's tough, like thinking back to why we got into this career in the first place, you know, especially when they're especially when we're going through tough times like we are now. Anyway, throughout it all, there's this understanding that no matter what happens, how much the world moves on, one thing remains constant and that's our relationships with others because business is about people. We also touched on expectations, how it takes guts to not follow the herd, recognise that we don't need to pour our hearts out on LinkedIn or do TikTok videos and that, uh, Uh, Our identity doesn't have to be wrapped up in where we're located or how we dress. I mean, it's just about enjoying our craft, right? Looking after our mental health. And, you know, Luigi talks about leaving the city and just, you know, existing, being in the moment. Because is it all about the work? I mean, when did we get so attached to the treadmill? There's surely another way. It doesn't have to be like this. We are in charge of our own path. We can reinvent ourselves, our business, anything we want. You know, we're we're in control. Luigi also talked about why it's great to give back and support the younger generation and how it's refreshing to see these younger people doing things differently, doing things better than we did, um, like doing meetings on a hill walk or whatever. I know it sounds cheesy, but I did feel, I don't know, I look back on my own career and I just thought, yeah, I felt I felt myself nodding along. What a time to be alive, you know? It's this chance to run a successful business from anywhere that our parents didn't really have. And, and you know, finding the time and space to remember to live is always a challenge. But did our conversation spark something in you? Because if you've been feeling a bit stuck lately, hopefully we'll have given you a bit of a boost to make that change. And change isn't easy, as we discussed. I mean, I personally was stuck for years but there is a way out. It might just take some time to work out how to get there and that's okay. If you haven't caught up yet, give the episode a listen. Luigi goes much further sharing his thoughts on mental health, happiness and new adventures. Now onto this week's Creative News Roundup and DNAD has released its free annual showcase and trend analysis for 2024, offering insights into the best creative campaigns and the latest industry trends. It includes behind the scene looks at award winning work judged by over 300 leading creatives. And this year's trends emphasise themes like fandoms, localised impact and textural evolution. If you want to find out more about that than the report, is uh, there, available online with full access, and it's designed to inspire the next generation of creatives, so do check it out. Headspace has launched a new generative AI mental health chatbot named Ebb, designed to offer real-time supportive conversations for users. Ebb aims to provide personalised assistance and encourage healthier mental habits by leveraging artificial intelligence. It's a tool that's part of Headspace's broader mission to make mental health support more accessible and immediate, especially in moments when professional guidance might not be readily available. Well, that's a very positive thing indeed. Finally, a 16-year-old US gamer, Michael Atiaga, I hope I've pronounced his name correctly, has become the first person to reset Nintendo's Tetris back to level zero after beating the game on Twitch. 
Artiago streaming has, um, sorry, Artiago, who's streaming as dog playing Tetris, cleared level 255, the game's highest, in 82 minutes before it reset to level zero. He scored 29.4 million points and expressed disbelief during the stream, saying he was glad it was over and jokingly vowed never to play again. He's a former world um, champion for Tetris, and he celebrated this historic achievement with his viewers. I mean, my God, can you just imagine the music during that time? It would be driving me insane, but I do love, I do love Tetris. Congratulations, Michael. This week's spotlight is on independent type foundries set to be popular with designers in 2025. Yes, we asked the creative community for their favourites because who are we to judge? It's really in your hands. You're the expert. And you helped us come up with a curated list of indie foundries to call on for your design projects. And yes, while mainstream fonts have their place, sometimes it's worth exploring more experimental and unique options and support some of those smaller businesses. And that's where these foundries do shine. So one highlight is Type of Feeling, founded by Jessica Walsh of And Walsh. It offers a curated collection of emotionally driven typefaces like Jubal, which conveys joy through its playful curves and thick strokes. Another standout is Grilly Type, a Swiss foundry known for creating unique typefaces like GT Super, inspired by 1970s display serifs. Ono Type Co. adds a quirky touch with its expressive fonts, including the popular sans serif Degula. Explore these and more from dynamic studios like Dynamo, Fontwork and Pangram Pangram, each offering typefaces that throw up the possibilities of typography. For more details on these foundries and the fonts they offer, check out the full list on Creative Boom. And now for our book of the week, Never Play It Safe, a practical guide to freedom, creativity and a life you love by Chase Jarvis. I mean, that sounds really appropriate given what we've been talking about this week. Anyway, this book is a powerful manifesto for creatives who want to live authentically and embrace their full potential. Instead of relying on trendy productivity tools or rigid success formulas, Jarvis invites us to reconnect with our own creativity through intuition, risk-taking and curiosity. Sounds great. And drawing from his experiences as an award-winning photographer and entrepreneur, he offers practical strategies for breaking out of the comfort zone, pursuing bold ideas, and building a fulfilling life rooted in personal passion. But, and here's the caveat, Jarvis says that true success comes not from playing it safe, but from challenging conventional wisdom and forging your own path. He encourages us to embrace our innate talents, trust our instincts, and take creative leaps even in the face of uncertainty and we are living in uncertain times. This book is a must read for anyone looking to escape the pressure to constantly optimize and instead focus on doing meaningful work that aligns with their core values. So if you're feeling stuck or looking for new inspiration, Never Play It Safe offers both the mindset shift and actionable steps to lead a more liberated, creatively fulfilling life. Where do we sign up? This week's tip of the week is on how to differentiate yourself as a creative in a saturated market. Gosh, sounds a bit doom and gloomy, doesn't it? But anyway, we're in a competitive creative industry, aren't we? And standing out is so important. With challenges like shrinking budgets, increasing competition and the rise of AI, we all need to differentiate. I mean, God, you came here for a cheer up, didn't you? And now I'm giving you all this. But anyway, according to Seth Godin, in a busy marketplace, not standing out is the same as being invisible. But standing out doesn't mean being the best. Of course, it's about embracing your unique story, style and values. There is a lot of advice in our feature, but one key tip is this. Embrace vulnerability in your storytelling. Sharing honest behind the scenes experiences will resonate with audiences more deeply than polished self-promotional content. If of course that ties in with your goals. So do check it out on Creative Boom. Now it's time for letters to the editor. And this week we heard from Oliver Schondorfer from Pimp My Type in Austria. He wrote... I really enjoyed the conversation with Seema Sharma. It made things feel a bit lighter. Right now, I kind of feel overwhelmed by the speed of development and a bit threatened by AI. 
As a UI designer and typography content creator, what am I to do if I don't design? Is my work still relevant if the machine does it faster, maybe better? At the moment, image generation tools are bad at typography, but they will catch up. This makes me think. But what resonated most with me was that there is still a human mind, eye and hand needed to give it that certain finesse, a certain authenticity, to make it feel real. And type and typography can play a big role in that. So for now, after this in interview, I see it a bit lighter and I want to think of it as an additional tool in my belt. It's certainly a process. Thank you, Oliver. On this week's guest, James got in touch from Devon and he wants to remain anonymous. He wanted to thank Luigi for sharing his honest experiences on navigating the design industry, leaving a big city and finding space to breathe again. It really resonated. James said he left London last year and moved back towards home. He'd wanted to make the change for quite some time, but was terrified of leaving the capital, worried he'd lose touch. But quite the opposite has happened as he's found a creative community in his new hometown and he still gets work from London. And so he wrote... Luigi talks so much about business being about people. It's so true. I was lucky to make some valuable connections whilst living there, and I make sure I keep those relationships going. London, after all, is only a train ride away. Have you got something to say or a question for the podcast? Send us an email at letters at creativeboom.com. On Monday, our guest will be Lisa Smith, the Global Executive Creative Director at JKR in New York. And boy, it's another good one. Lisa and I do not hold back. I mean, we go beyond the brand. We talk about creativity, yes, and leadership, and also what it takes to make it to the top. But we also share some hard truths about the design industry. It really Honestly, it really cannot be missed, as you'll get a very honest peek behind the scenes with someone who has shaped some of the most recognisable brands in the world. And blimey, she's worked damn hard to get there. So don't miss out. That's it for this week's episode of The Spark. I hope you're feeling refreshed and ready to take on whatever comes next. Don't forget to check out Creative Boom for more stories and features, including everything we mentioned today. You'll find all the links in the show notes. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on Monday. Monday.